radio how it's supposed to be heard. It's the Baker Boys Show. All right, y'all, let's do it one more time, one more again. Uh, 47 past the hour, Nick V and Eric V, the Baker Boys up in here with our special guest, Eric Special, v. special guest yeah. in the studio. Thank you for tuning in, 47 after the hour. Welcome to the show. If you're not awake, we're about to wake you up, okay? You ready? Here, here we, we go. go. Come on, come on. Yeah, well, it's the Baker, baby. Like Malcolm X in the house. Yeah. Good morning. How are you? How you feeling? We're good. We're good. How are you? Oh, man. I'm great. I'm great. Are you a morning person or are you a night person? He asks the same question. As soon as they wake up. No, no. I got to ask the females because they don't usually open wake up this early like this, right? What? You know what? Honestly, this lifestyle, I don't know anymore. What is this lifestyle? Let's talk about this lifestyle. Like, it's just. You know, you gotta always like early morning flights that yeah. I'm right, you know, never right. prepared for. Have you ever <laughs> like, missed? A, have you ever missed a flight? Honestly, somehow <laughs> I always make them. Yeah. Somehow, even even when I'm like running to the gate yeah. last second, you know. But honestly, it's it's hard because I would say I'm a night person, but I'm really not anymore mm. either. So I just don't know because mornings are hard. Late nights are hard. You just got to do it. So right. you know? being, being an artist, you don't have a regular lifestyle. You're not able to binge watch TV shows, go to movies, do normal stuff. You know, you're in the studio. You're working on, you know, your, your next thing. You're out doing shows and all that stuff like that. Do you miss any of that at all? Um, Not really because this is, like, all I kind of know uh-huh. in my adulthood life. Like, I got in the industry when I just, like, right when I was 18. Okay. I had an internship at Def Jam, actually. Oh, wow. Oh. Okay. That's so crazy. I've been in the industry for a minute now, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I kind of, like, this is all I know now, you know? But I will say that most of it I love. Mm-hmm. There's just some parts that are hard, and it's just like, oh, I don't want to do this. What are those like, hard parts yeah. for you? I think more so, like, you know, I love, you know, the performing and recording aspects of everything. So everything that goes into those parts. The creative part. The creative part. Yeah. You know, everything else I don't like. Yeah. I'm, I'm with <laughs> you. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Like, like coming to a morning show no, and no, letting no. a guy sing for you in the yeah, morning? You know, no, like that this? part. This, this I love, too. She's this talking is about fun. the business part. Yeah, the business part. You know, the, the stress, legal part. You know, the, like, yeah, the industry part, the business part, the, like, whole, like, so, overthinking part, you right? Know what I mean? But being in Def Jam and being an intern, you got a chance to see the inner workings of what a record label right. does. Like, it's really, really tough. It's not a lot of things. There's a lot of things, moving parts that have to happen for you know the exactly. artist, the management, the the PR. There's a lot of moving parts for yeah. one artist. Yeah, for it to work. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you know what? I I loved being able to see that because like. I was able to see like everything that went on in the inside world at such like right when I was getting into it. So right. I was like, okay, nowadays you can really do everything yourself. You know right, very saying? true. It wasn't like that before, mm-hmm. you know, but now it's like, so if you learn all the ropes and you learn everything that you need and all the missing pieces, then you're able to be like, well, I can do this too. Right. You know what I mean? So at the age of like 20, 19, I'm like, starting to run my own label basically mm-hmm. do you know what i'm saying That's like awesome. and like filling all the gaps and like okay i need this i need this i need this so that is the good part about it though you yeah. know and it's yeah. like being able to show that to other artists is cool because other artists might be like oh you know how do you do this or it's like how do you do this and i'm like yo you just got to figure out what you need and you go get it. it you know right. what i'm saying like you just got to figure it out you know and just go no one really has the answers everyone just goes along with what they feel <laughs> we have inez x in the studios the baker boys right now um question for you as far as being an intern at def jam what is do you have one particular lesson that you learned at def jam that you've applied in your business now that you're you know running your own label and doing your own stuff is there anything specific that you can remember like oh i remember they did this for this project or this and that you know taking some knowledge that you learned as an intern at a record label i remember at the time um i think iggy was blowing sorry trying to get these headphones together and oh sorry about that hair together yeah your hair me, headphones getting it together but um yeah so at the time they were blowing up iggy Okay. Yeah. And I was like, like I said, I was like 18, 19. I remember like just seeing like Iggy, what they did with her and how she was kind of like, she was a, she was an unapologetic artist. Mm-hmm. Like she just had this song come out that was like, 
I can't curse, but it was like P word, you mm. know? Oh, yeah. For, for a woman's private part. Yeah, we say pupusa, but you could say pupusa. that. Pupusa, yeah. yeah, I like that. <laughs> the pupusa, yeah, that's hot. So, yeah, that. So, she had a song like that. And I remember, like, they were really pushing that whole, like, really, like, unapologetic kind of, you in know. In your face type of thing. Yeah, in your face, right. you know. And at the time, you know, when I first was doing music and I was first, you know, coming out, like, I was like, you know, I'm my sweet girl thing. And you weren't just ready like, to do know, that. Yeah, Yeah, I wasn't ready at all. I was just, you know, just like on my good girl thing. I was afraid a little bit. And now I'm just at this point where it's funny because, like, full circle, I'm, like, on this, like, unapologetic wave like i don't you know what i mean you gotta yeah. where, where you did know. that where did that power come from where, where, where did where did you what was the breakthrough for you to uh, let you be free in who in who you were i think it was like a lot of like i was in like this bad deal and i was in this bad, you know a lot of bad situations mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah and really like the industry will like chew you up and spit you out yeah, they you know use you saying? as much as much as they can and yeah. then we're done with you or they don't get anything out of you it's like i don't move to the with you On like, to the next. literally and and that it, it gets so hard as an artist to like like be like you know because when we, you know you're you're passionate about what you do you know it's just like this is what I love. This is what I'm, you know, passionate about. And one of the main things we want is to be understood. You know, I mm -hmm. think everybody wants that. And I think that sometimes when you go a little left, you become a little misunderstood. But there becomes a point when you are unapologetic that you're like, you know what? I know what I'm trying to do. Right. I know the bigger picture. Right. And there's something here. You know what I mean? There's always like a master plan that we have and you kind of have to build for yourself. You okay. know what I mean? Like I see myself doing all these kinds of things. So in order to get there, I just see myself being this kind of artist of just being unapologetic AF. You know what I mean? Just saying what I want, being who I want, and inspiring others to do the same. Okay. So it was just kind of like, I think a lot of um, suppression, <laughs> I would say, you <laughs> yeah, know? Yeah. Okay. Or like, you know, just kind of just not feeling good enough. You know, it it definitely brought out that inner beast. Well, that's or, cool because like, some people go in a hole when they yeah. when they feel like, you know, they're not being understood or nobody's there to help them or support them it's like you go into a whole some people do but you took the the energy and you used it to your advantage yeah that i really do like i'm the type of like i'm the type that it's just like i use it all and i just like put it into my craft or like you know like before i go on stage like if something good gets me i'm like oh i'm ready to go all like right. let's get it let's kill it like you know it's just there's something about it so because I, I use it as my expression you know and that's the that's the balance you got to find of like Loving your craft, working on your craft, executing that, mm -hmm. and still remaining like that passionate and that like drive yeah. and that, you know, like not letting all of it get to you to the point where you're like, I don't even want, to, you know what I mean? Right. Because I have you gotta do what you love. I have another question before we get into the single Me Too. Um, not only being an artist is in this industry is very hard. Like you said, they'll chew you up, they'll spit you out, they'll go on to the next, they'll, they'll get what they can out of you and then they move on. But being a female in this, in this, game is very hard and the the, tri the trials and tribulations of you know either record people or whoever trying to come at you on a on a personal level right. you know on some you know i'll do this for you if you do this for me what what have you had to deal with any of that and how do you deal with that being in your shoes i'll tell you one thing and like you know i wish that i could tell because when i first got in the game one of my mentors who's still in my life she, she was from Def Jam and she showed me the rope. She helped me get the internship and she told me, she was like, do not mess with anybody in this game. Yeah. Like, you know, like she's, that's, what, that's what she said to me. She's like, don't mess with anyone in the game. And I was just like, you know, I, ha you know, I really tried my best. It's hard when in, in the industry that you're in, whatever industry you're in, like, you know, you're going to probably date in your industry. Right, you know what I'm right. saying? It's hard. Because they kind of understand your business. Yeah. A little you know bit. what I mean? No matter what you do, you know what I mean? But the thing is, is like, that was probably the most valuable piece of advice she gave me because honestly, every time someone's like, oh, you do this for me, I'll do that for you. It does not work. Like it has to be something, unless it's like you're building something together. But normally if it's like for sexual favors mm -hmm. or whatever, like that don't work. I mean, most of the time it's BS. And then most of the time, if you do mess with someone in the industry as a woman, they kind of try to stunt your growth. Like we were talking about this the other day. Like every person that I've dated, 
has not wanted me to like fully win because right. they're like, I'm gonna lose her, you know? And it's just like, what the hell? That's like, their you know insecurity. What I mean? That's yeah, their insecurity. You know? They have to support you. Exactly. You know, because you will remember that they were there to support you right, during right. that time. Exactly. You and I, I've been honestly, I've been looking for that and I'm not gonna you know, <laughs> settle for nothing less. Like, Lord. Well, cause... you know, the other day I, I I'm I've been single for a very long time, so i I kind of figured out the issue. I don't know if they're gonna make these for men, but they're making robot sex dolls. In the, in yeah, the, no, they are so, making them for men. They're yeah. ma- no, they're making them for men, but yeah. are they making oh, them for, for females? Women. Yeah, I know, I know. It's really hard for females. <laughs> Would you accept I mean, a robot as a lover? Honestly, you know what? I'm not gonna lie to you. I need like the physical, like that. Warmth. You want that passion? Right, yeah, if, I need the passion. If you could make your perfect robot sex doll, who would it be? Like face, body of such and such. Like put a Frankenstein together. Ah, Let's go. Somebody. Okay. Well, here's the thing. I think that there's like it's it's like. The females are taking over right now. Okay. So there's like a few females that I'm like, damn. Okay. But they could like be females. The males and the oh, the, the females. I mean, ah. let's give it up. Give it up. Give us the juice. Let's talk about it. I know, right? Cause like there's like honestly, okay, the, a couple females that I love are like Bella Hadid. Mm-hmm. Love her. Halsey, she's hot. Halsey. Halsey. Halsey is hot. <laughs> Isn't she I the one who just scratched? Yeah, she her just for... she just scraped her back up because she was uh, rock climbing naked. naked. Oh. Yeah. See, she does stuff like that. <laughs> she's crazy. I love her. Like she's dope. So you would go naked rock climbing with Halsey? Hell yeah. She's oh, so right. hot. I she's like so that. hot. She's I love that. Like I love unapologetic females. Okay, yeah. She's such a turn on. I'm like, oh, she doesn't give a damn. She like, just does her thing. She's going rock like rock climbing naked. Right. She does that. That's right. so dope. I love it. I love it. Have you ever been rock climbing? Yeah, it's not really for me. <laughs> like, <laughs> not gonna lie to you, like I do not like anything that is like is like one wrong move and it's death. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, <laughs> not a good I don't idea. want to do it. Like, like skydiving. Yeah. Or well, I've, okay, I've done skydiving. Swimming, but, swimming but, with the great you know white what sharks. I mean? But like, here's the thing about skydiving. So, going up in the plane to skydive, right. I was thinking in my head, I was like, oh my god, this is about to go way left because like I'm not gonna be able to breathe. So I was worried about that. Like, how am I going to breathe? How am I going to breathe? Like, there's going to be so much air coming my face. Oh, so you're worried about that. And then when I t- jump out the plane, what do you know? Like, I'm overly worried about breathing. I can't breathe, right? I'm tapping onto my guy. Like, oh. the instructor guy. Like, I can't. I can't breathe. Until, like, I, like, pulled out the thing. I really was freaking out, having anxiety attacking that. So bring it to us. So give us the give us the conclusion. You're on your way down. You're flying, what, 300 miles an hour, 100 miles an hour? Yeah. Okay, so Free how do you, are you breathing? Are you I couldn't really breathe during the free fall part. That no. was bad. But then when we pulled the latch, I could breathe. And then we were like flying and it was dope. So but you could have passed out without any breath. Yeah, I was just like, oh, we're going to die up here. <laughs> Wait, yeah. what, were, what were the thoughts going down? Like, you know, because people say they, they think of things before they're possibly going to die. And then all these things race through your mind. Yeah. What were some of the things racing through your mind at that point? Oh, when I couldn't breathe, I was like, I'm going to die. <laughs> <laughs> but then it's like, they're so beautiful. Yeah. So you're like, you know what? This is not a bad way to die but this is like you know try, like, try to justify your dying yeah but i'm still like this sucks why can't i breathe right now it's like i it was bad it's top of the hour it's nick v eric v the baker boys uh we're yes we got that we're, we're with inez x in the house we're gonna be ready to play the new song it's called me too and of course, the, when the, we saw the title, I was like, "Okay, this is the Me Too movement thing." But explain the single, how you utilize the the phrase "Me Too" for for this particular record. I seen the video, and you you're with your girlfriends. It was like, "This dude's texting me." And you're like, <laughs> "Yeah, me too." What do you mean he's texting you? He's texting me too. You too. So there's like five <laughs> girls that he's texting at right? the same time. So tell me about that. So. You know, yeah, it, it, when we made the song, of course, we thought about the whole movement of yeah. Me Too. And it's something that's so, you know, I would On say... Top of, top of everybody's mind. Yeah, time, yeah, it's such a sensitive topic. And I feel like with this song, it was like, first of all, it's an empowerment song, which I love. You mm-hmm. know, I'm just basic. we're basically saying like, you know, like, oh, he's playing you? Well, I'd rather have that girl anyway. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I don't even want him. Bye. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. which is a different approach because I feel like a lot of times, like in society, like... 
society like forces women to be like against each other. Like it's something that's very like, you know, like, oh, competition, who wore it better? And this, right. that, it's always competition. Right. always like, well, you know I mean, what I mean? It, like that's by nature. If you go to like a club or anything and you see women or women see other women, they're the first thing they do is they check out their clothes exactly, and they see what she's wearing. Exactly. I don't do that with, as a guy, as I'm a not guy. wired like, oh man, do you see he's wearing those Jordans? Oh you God. know what I mean? You know what? I'll tell you one thing. So, okay. I went to college for a little bit, right? And I took this sociology class. Okay. And it helped me to really realize and figure out that, like, a lot of things society pushes forward, like why men can't cry. You know what I mean? They can't be as emotional as women, you know? Because it, then they're seen as, oh, they're, they're, they're soft. Weak. They're yeah, weak. but that's part of the problem. Right. Because people it are not is. able to let their emotions out. And exactly. And I feel like with women, it's like one of the things is that whole competition thing. Like, men are in competition, but always like friendly competition. Like, yeah. oh, like, you know, men fight each other the next second, they're friends. Women, oh, it's not the same. No. And I feel like that's not our human nature. Right. That's how society pushes us. Okay. That our human nature is like normally most women species, like, you know, lionesses, tigresses, when they give birth, they raise their kids together. Mm. And most of the time, with raising children, period, it takes a village. You know what I mean? And when women stick together and do things together, everybody it's, empower each other. It, it's so powerful, you yeah. know? And I think that that was something with the song that I was just like, it was, it, it's, it's a very funny song. You know, I wanted to bring light and bring comedy to the situation, to the topic. But it's more importantly, like, instead of going against each other on this matter, let's stick together. Let's all join forces, yeah, you right. know? And I was really inspired by the John Tucker Must Die movie back, you know, like when it came out. In yeah, the, John whatever. Tucker Must Die. Yeah, yeah, I remember that movie. And I loved it because it was just like an Ashanti and all these people. And it was cute because it was like the girls stuck together. They became, band together. Yeah, became friends because the guy was playing them all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that if girls did that more, it would be so much better instead of like, oh, I hate her. She took my man. Like, no, like maybe well, she didn't maybe like you know what I mean like you know kind of side with the women for once so I think that that's a different cool thing like you know let's side with each other and not go against each all right other. so introduce your record Inez X in the studio go ahead do it yes it's your girl Inez X and this is my new single me too make a boy show Enjoy. make a boy show Ow. coming up Thank next you know, no, I'm like me too <laughs> X. Produced by Still of uh, Still of Foreign, is that what it is? Still of Foreign. Yeah, Still of Foreign on a beat. That's dope, man. That's that sample dope. is crazy right there. So you are of uh, Arabic, is that what it is? Yes. Uh, pa pa uh, Where were you born, Mama? Yeah. I was born in Brooklyn, New York. And your Brooklyn. family? Your family? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, my family. My mom was born in Bethlehem. I was born in Brooklyn. So yeah, she's from Palestine. But I, yeah. Do you I, ever go back there? Have you ever been there? I've never been there, but I'm like really like, I've really embraced my culture within the last like few years. Mm -hmm. I think there's like been a lot, like especially being from New York, 9-11, yeah. there was a lot dealing with that culture. So when I was younger, like and coming from Brooklyn, I used to say that I was like Arabic and Spanish. Mm -hmm. People used to think I was Spanish all the time. Right. So I used to think, oh yeah, I used to be like, yeah. And I was, my mom's best friend who like heart, part raised me is Puerto Rican. Okay. So I was like, yeah, I'm Palestinian and Puerto Rican. But, <laughs> and I've actually right heard there. people do that, yeah. like in the industry. So it's so funny because I was like, oh, I used to do that. That's so funny. Right. But I own who I am now and right. I love it. So. Congratulations. That's good. Good for you. Um, there was a story earlier today, and I read on your bio that you're a huge Michael Jackson fan. I am. What are your feelings about Michael Jackson now? <laughs> uh, after the whole leaving Neverland, uh, there was a school that took his name off the school. Um. So I don't... This is the thing with Michael. Like, Michael is a very powerful person. So right. we just will never know. Because there's so much money that surrounds Michael. Yeah. So you never know if people are just trying to get money still. Right. Or if it's true. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm a huge diehard Michael fan. I've known people who have personally known Michael and personally, you know what I mean? And everyone I know just has nothing but high things to high say. High praise. But, like, we'll just never know. Like, it's just something that it's like, honestly, I just don't i watched it and i for a quick second believe them mm -hmm. but it's like you don't know if they're just trying to get money or if they really mean it michael's such a big entity still and people are still trying to tarnish his name for money right so you just never know it's and, hard and also you know those people have changed their story multiple multiple, multiple times multiple, multiple, multiple so times. You just, what do you believe at this point you know what i'm saying yeah. well I, I, what i try to do is i put myself try to put myself as a seven-year-old kid right where i'm standing next to somebody like michael jackson right and then 
allowing this this he's a god basically to me at seven years old and if he guides me to be like hey this is between you and i we can't talk when you're at that age you don't know how to 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 con, you differentiate know, you yeah. don't know if it's true what is bad and then and then now now you're now you're an adult and you remember all these things like you have to be quiet or else we're both going to get in trouble right like that's kind of effed up in the head right. you know like wow these kids that have had to deal with this all throughout their lives this trauma and you can imagine you know everybody has traumas but these guys have lived with this throughout their lives and now they're finally speaking up and owning what what they what their experience is exactly. so but we don't know if that's true or not that's right. you know right that's it that's and you know what's hard it's like there's a lot of people like i take um sexual abuse very seriously yeah. is a serious manner to me and i don't like people who lie right because mm -hmm. there are so many people who are really going through such traumatic experiences and do not you know deserve to not be believed yeah. you know what i mean but at the same time there are so many people who lie on the manner like to for money or mm -hmm. or for any kind of gain gain yeah. yeah and it's disappointing because especially with somebody who like Michael, he's not even alive to defend himself. Yeah, right he's, now. he can't defend like himself. Like if he was alive, he'd be alive. Like, I didn't do it. Like you know what I mean? Yeah. Like who knows? But it's just like damn. Like he can't even defend himself. He got his kids who were defending him. You yeah. know what I mean? Which shows that you know that he was a loving father at least, because most of the time abusive men or abusive people have mm -hmm. a certain demeanor about them. Mm -hmm. Michael didn't come across no, as an abusive sweetheart. person to right. me it's at to all. To everybody. Yeah. yeah, he didn't come across as abusive. Now. You know the way they told the stories was very i don't you, you're like i don't know what to believe like you know mm -hmm. what i mean because they were just so they were detailed they were I, I was just like oh my god i can't i can't even listen like you're yeah, hard. It's hard it was to hard listen. to watch it was really was so it's hard because it's just like we just will never know and michael's not even here to defend himself so or we like to see how he'll react to be like oh he's lying or telling the truth you know so it's hard it's yeah hard. definitely uh inez x in the studio who else is uh influence to you you know as far as your music goes I mean, uh, so many people, so many people. I have so many influences. And it doesn't have to be musical. It could be, you know, anybody else as well. It could be Bill Gates. It could be, you know, somebody on the outside world. It could be whoever. It's Steve Jobs. Steve OG. Jobs, yeah. Yeah, he's epic. I mean, I'm very inspired by artists like Madonna, though. Madonna, it's like if Madonna and Michael had a baby, it'd probably be. <laughs> <laughs> that, that'd be you then. Literally. So you just start the rumor, you know? It's yeah, like, hey, I'm exactly. Madonna, baby. I'm exactly. <laughs> a love child. I was a love oh. child of Michael Jackson. <laughs> have you seen her daughter? We kind of have Yeah, she's family. gorgeous. It's a thing. It's a thing. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, like, I just had, like, you know, I've been exploring with my hair, and I've, you know, have pull, been pulling influences there. I'm like heavily inspired by artists like Rihanna, who's very unapologetic, or like Marilyn Monroe's of the world. Mm -hmm. You know, I had this short blonde look, and that was so fun. And it was like, you know, it was like Marilyn vibes, who's also another, another unapologetic woman. So I'm very inspired by unapologetic women, and I've been studying them so much right now. And then I just watched Bohemian Rhapsody like ten times. Oh, that <laughs> I'm a amazing. huge right. That movie oh is amazing. Oh my God, it's so good. So good. So good. Eric it's V would so like to good. watch it with you on the 11th I, I time, please. I would watch please. it. Oh my I God, would watch it. seriously, I love that movie. let's get it. Because whenever I'm on the plane, I'm just like, Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know, like literally. You're like a little kid watching Little Mermaid. Literally, literally. <laughs> Come on. It's just like, oh, because he just killed it. Oh yeah. my God. And he's also like Middle Eastern. Yeah. So that was awesome to see that. Now, like, I had no idea previous to this movie that, that he was. Yeah, you right? Know? I had no clue. I know. And he was like, you know, my Egyptian descent. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> Oh, hey. Hala, this is huge. It's huge. Yeah. The movement is here because you know, you know, it's not encouraged for people of this descent to be in the arts, but now it's like the revolution is here. Ooh, so that you have that problem with your parents or your parenting? They didn't tell you to stay out of the entertainment industry? Absolutely. For the first few years, it was definitely a challenge. Like they definitely did not want me to be. In How did they get over it? Uh success. Okay, they seen know? some movement for you. Yeah, like my first, you know. Re, you know, working with people like real people, producers, Timbaland Camp, and you know, and then getting on the radio, and then being on tour, and I think the radio though, because then that's when everybody was like, like, oh, oh, we, it's official. They're, they're oh, taking it's, you serious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, like seriously, right. like that's so factual. Because then everyone's calling their phones, and then they're like, I oh. heard you on the radio. <laughs> yeah, legit. You know, now it's so funny because I have cousins that will like call my mom and like be like, oh, like. She's famous, like, <laughs> <laughs> and my mom, you know, 
Me and my, my mom is my biggest supporter and yeah. my biggest support system, my bit, my love, my everything. So she'll just like, you know, we'll just laugh about it now. It's just funny. Cause That's amazing. I got a question for you. Do you remember prom? Your yeah, prom? I do. Or did you break? Did you drop out? Did you go to prom and all that? I good went stuff? to my prom. I actually had everybody come take uh, pictures at my house in okay. my backyard. Okay. So it was, it was like that epic? twenty that... couples in my backyard. Okay. That... Question. So uh, who did your makeup for your prom? Uh, I don't. Do you remember? Know. Did you pay somebody or did you do it yourself? I had like someone do it, but I don't remember. It was. I don't think it was that good. It wasn't that I'm good. I'm scared. Don't tell me you have a picture. I'm not ready. <laughs> no. All right, no, no, all right. No. Okay. The, the reason why I'm asking is because my daughter, she does makeup, and somebody's oh. asking her to do makeup for her, and I want to know how much do we charge? How much do we charge this person? <laughs> oh my god, hell? so like funny. Like fifty bucks at least, right? Oh, at least. Yeah, because yeah, it's minimum. gonna take an hour and a half or so. Oh yeah, minimum. Okay, yeah. so I'll see, tell I, her. see, I was gonna take it left. To, you know, prom is like. A the, time where you're gonna spend. Well, so, yeah. No, well, not only that, but it's like the coming out for young men at school. If the whole thing is they're gonna get laid at prom. Oh yeah. Did ah! anything happen during prom, Inez X? Oh my God, so funny. Okay, so, <laughs> so honestly, like, I, the, like I was like a crazy rebellious teenager, you know. Uh -huh. But like, I was like raised like. Uh, like if you have sex, you're going to hell. Yeah, right. For marriage, you know. We're all there. So <laughs> yeah, you know. So I never like let it get to that point. Okay. You know what I mean? So prom, like I don't even remember, but it was just like never that. You okay, know? so you didn't have sex during prom. <laughs> no, okay. never. Oh my god. Did never. somebody try Wait. to Wait hook up with you? You know what? Honestly, we were like, you know, in high school, it was like it, we, we were like partying every weekend. Prom yeah. was like, oh, we got to be appropriate now. Like you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like it was kind of that. So. You know, and I'm sure the kid. You know, I'm sure it's everyone nowadays is doing the same thing. They party every weekend, so when prom comes around, it's like it's not a big deal. Do, do you yeah. remember the guy you went with? I do. He was my. He was like my best friend. Okay. Yeah, he was my best friend. It was kind of like huh? that. Yeah. Friend zone. He's actually gay. Okay. He well, came hey, out. Well, you're, yeah, he came you, out. Hey, you know, he hey, wasn't hey, even like it wasn't like him. a guy like that at all. He's my best friend, and it was awesome. That's like, great. And, and honestly, I'm so I'm happy for him, Mike. I love you. Yeah. Okay. Hey. Um. Mike. So I know you're a Biggie fan. Brooklyn. Yes, I am. Okay. Brooklyn, what's up? Are you down to bust something for us, right oh. quick? Ah! <laughs> it, it could be written, but just give us some for the mornings, right quick, for our listeners out there. You know what? But yeah, let's it, like, let's get if it. If you're ready, let's do it. If you're not, we can do it the next time. Ow, it's up to you. It. You ready? Oh, I can't curse though. Give it. Give it up. Go ahead. Go do ahead. it. We're gonna, we're gonna give you a pass. We'll, we'll let give you curse. You a pass. We're warning everybody out there that has parents. She's going to curse, guys. Yeah, children. If you have children and you don't want to hear no cursing on the freestyle, turn it down. <laughs> Ina Zex in the spot. BK represent to the fullest. Hey. Hey. Ow. Okay. <laughs> get it together. Get it together. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. I be fashion we killing, you still be ducking the laws. Now I cop up Givenchy like it was nothing at all. Give a fuck who you are, still get rushed to the mark. Hundred bands, half a milli when I run through the mall. Take a pic, bitches sit, train them up, tell them sit. <laughs> <laughs> I think, oh, man. I, think okay. I had you going too fast with the music band. Yeah, don't worry about it. <laughs> but you still flipped it. We appreciate you doing that for us. Not everybody is down to do that. I know that. you didn't even drop a beat for me. That was acapella, okay? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it is the Baker Boy Show. I'm going to drop a beat for you right yeah. now. We just okay, changed the, the mood in the room right now. <laughs> Obviously, when you came in, we sang for you. Now it's time to go. <laughs> so <laughs> that's when this music comes out. But it's, it's positive, though. We're calling this thing called mouth love. Welcome to it. You know what that is? Have no. you ever heard of this term, mouth love? No, it's good. All right. Well, Nick V is our teacher, so we're gonna follow him. He's gonna he's gonna lead us to the promised land, right, Nick V? <laughs> I'm gonna do my best. All right. Let me adjust my microphone real quick. I need everybody in the room to take a deep breath, Join please. Us. Hold it. Push it out. Eric V is a little premature on the holding. All right. Oh. One more deep breath. Hold it. Let it go. All right, so I'm going to leave you with some um, positive affirmations. When you leave here, this is going to be like a cloak protecting you, you know, all I throughout the day. Okay? Love. So I want you to repeat after me, everybody in the room. I accept love. I accept love. I am magical. I am magical. I am courourageous. I am courageous. I love it when they call me Big Papa. I, I love, love it when, when they, they call, call me, me Big, Big Papa. Papa. You are now in mouth love. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm not <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so thank you for coming through.
thank, thank you for hanging so out. Much. Thank you for your exper- awesome. sharing your experience that you did not have sex during prom. We know uh, this now. Uh, mama, make mama proud. Okay? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, how can people follow you? What's your social media? Inez X on everything. I N A S space X or just I N A S X. You know, Instagram and everything. You don't need to add the space. All yeah. right, all right. So you already done your tour. You're gonna be coming out doing some more performances in Los Angeles. Let us know. We yes, want to see for you. Yes, sure. Come through. Okay. Love on me. Yeah, we we lo- we love to pull up on you, girl. <laughs> right. Have a beautiful, blessed day. We appreciate you coming on in here. We'll Thank see you next you guys time. So much. You're part Thank of the you. family now, baby love girl. Baker boys. Radio, how it's supposed to be heard. It's the Baker Boys Show. What's going on? This is Drippin' Every f- day.